Oh, so my name is Holger. I'm the I'm the owner of Voxative, and yeah, I'm going to show you guys around here through our rooms in Berlin in Tempelhof. So yeah, what we what you see here is the 987 system, that is our first two-way loudspeaker. That means um, we have an active woofer system and uh, an, an extremely high efficiency top. The woofer system is, has its own amplifier and goes up to 150 hertz. And the white bander is, it is a white bander that is uh, uh, built as 103 dB efficiency. Mm -hmm. And uh, we, call, we have inside the AC4D driver. And with this driver, uh, the housing has a, uh, a passive crossover. It is made with damping material so that we don't have any electric components uh, in the line to the driver. That means the driver can be directly connected to a one watt amplifier because of its high efficiency. You can drive it with a cord headphone amplifier if you like and lots of people do that mm -hmm. and we have a special cable set for the woofer section that gives you the perfect combination to the cord. Uh, 987 is a mathematical uh, multiplication a pi cross pi 3.14 cross 3.14 mm -hmm. is 987. It's uh, 45,000 dollars in this combination. Okay. It means semi-active semi mm -hmm. and uh, completely prepared for plug and play. But what we have actually is a new entry level speaker we call FIT, five inch tower. Mm -hmm. And we have our tiny little five inch driver inside. And we have no piano paint. It is a, a simple oiled surface. And it comes on an entry level price of 3,700 euros, which is the tenth part of this one. So it is a more moderate way to, to join the Voxative area. Mm -hmm. And then uh, next step is the ZES. The, the, the ZES is 10,000 euros a pair, has real piano paint, of course, and uh, an eight inch driver. Uh, we call it AC1N driver that is inside. And this baby here is, uh, it is based on the first speaker we ever made. Mm -hmm. If you look on the side again, you see the old Ampeggio speaker, where we did win the big prizes in 2010. Mm -hmm. It was product of the year in stereophile in 2011, I think. And this was the old version. And people always complained that there is no field core driver inside. But when I constructed this, I had no field core driver. So the space behind the driver is not big enough to, uh, to fit the big magnet. And after nearly 10 years now, there is a new speaker called Ampeggio X, and this has a field core driver. That means the, the depth is increased. Mm -hmm. A normal driver has a permanent magnet system. That means you have a magnet ring, mm -hmm. neodymium or ferrite or an eco, and uh, you glue it together with two steel plates, and then you have a magnet. Very mm -hmm. simple. A field core driver don't has a permanent magnet unit. Mm -hmm. That means you are winding a big coil and when you put a metal core inside, it gets magnetic when the coil is powered up by a voltage. Um, for me, it was simply a, um, a kick as an engineer to rebuild the first drivers that were ever made with more modern technology, because uh, the first drivers were made at the end of the 18th century, mm. and people did not have the big magnets and everything. And uh, also loudspeakers were mostly used in cinemas, not at home. Right. Yeah, they were field coil because they needed a, a big magnetic power mm -hmm. and they only could make it with field coils, not with permanent magnets. Because neodymium magnets had not been invented in this time. Uh, okay, so how, I mean, in what decade did neodymium magnets sort of take over from field coils in the majority? Um, in the majority it was in the 60s where the neodymium was discovered as a magnet material. So uh, then uh, more the big professional speakers went over to Alnico and Neodymium. And uh, they got the big studio monitors by JBL, by Western Electric and everything. Mm -hmm. They have all these Alnico magnets. And later the Neodymiums that are a little bit stronger came up and so there was no more need for field core drivers. Here you see one of the, I would say, main products 
of Marxative. And you see, <laughs> this is very heavy, 15 kilograms. Mm -hmm. And we make them completely by ourselves. Mm -hmm. That means that the, the, there is a big field coil inside. Mm -hmm. We do wind the coil by ourselves, then everything. So, and we mount it completely. And this is uh, the storage. Oof. So, and I, it is my, my favorite product. I love the field coil drivers. And they sound really good because the magnet is warming up when you put electrical power on it. Mm. And that uh, gives the music a very special sound because the voice coil is acting in a magnet gap that is warm. Mm. So, because the driver gets about 40 degrees centigrade, mm. and then uh, the voice coil is working in this warmed up magnet gap. And this is only happening on with a field coil driver. Mm. So, you have, yeah, you have a special sound, you hear that. <laughs> So this is the room where we mount our drivers and if you if you look on the side you see in the moment it's August so it's not much drivers uh, in the moment but uh, you see two drivers in durability test that means they have been mounted yesterday and running 24 hours to be sure that everything is fine and then they're going to be mounted in a speaker. Mm -hmm. And uh, here we have other drivers that are, these are made for experiment, for measuring. You see that also the magnets are made by us. So this is a ferrite magnet. Mm -hmm. This is a big neodymium magnet, very dangerous because extremely strong. And we make them all by ourselves. That means we get the parts made professionally in a company after we have constructed them. We only make the prototypes by ourselves mm -hmm. and then we glue everything together and then we have our own drivers. It's all voxative design. That means also the basket. Mm -hmm. Every piece in this speaker driver is made by us. There is nothing you can buy somewhere. We all, it's all produced for us or we produce it by ourselves. Yeah. And um, when you look here, we have some different sizes. This is our five inch. Uh, which is a wonderful, very linear white bander, mm. and uh, yeah, boxative <laughs> on the back, of course. And uh, we have the eight inch, mm -hmm. which is very famous. And here you can see that this one it has a cone made of real wood that is. 100 times more stiff than a paper cone and has exactly the same moving mass. So we were successful to make a cone in the, in the mass of a paper cone out of wood. And yeah, and we all make it by ourselves, of course. But that means we also make the cones. And if you go over here, I can show you some. So this is a wooden cone, extremely lightweight. And you can see this is real wood over here. Uh -huh. And of course, it, the, the surface is closed to make it uh, uh, unsensible against humidity and everything, mm. because otherwise it would, would move all the time. Of course, it doesn't. And the wither cone is still paper. We found out that it sounds simply better. We also could make it out of wood, but it sounds better when it's a combination out of paper and and wood. So, so are all your drivers a combination of paper and wood? Or they not every driver. We also have some, the, the entry level is also, this one is paper, mm. and the other, the more sophisticated level is complete paper and wood. And what kind of wood is it? Are you allowed to say? <laughs> <laughs> it, is, uh, it is tone wood from a, pia from a, from a grand piano. Mm. You know that there is a wooden plate down there in the piano that makes the sound. Ah. And a very thin stripe of this wood I said this word. I don't know the English word for it. In Germany, it's Fichte. Okay. But I don't know the English word. I'm it's sorry. Also Tonholz. Or... Tonholz. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Okay. So this is what we use because yeah. uh, um, our strategy or all of our philosophy is that the drivers or all material that we use on a speaker and a driver must be kind of musical themselves. Mm. And uh, so if you use aluminium as a cone, in my opinion, it doesn't sound really good. And uh, if you look on the market, you see that most of these aluminium cone drivers have disappeared because they do not sound really good. Yes, and then if you look over here, you see all unassembled speakers, uh, drivers, that you see this is a paper, paper woofer cone. Mm -hmm. And uh, 
we have a cutting machine that cuts it out of uh, Japanese calligraphy paper, oh. and then we glue it here, and then we steam it to uh, get this structure, mm -hmm. and then we paint it to make it unsensible against humidity. humidity. And then we glue it together with this one, yeah. which is also made the same way, and of course with a voice coil <laughs> that you need. It comes here, yeah. and then you have the driver. This <laughs> is the heart of our driver, and we make them all by ourselves. Could you t tell us about how you came to make drivers yourself rather than using an off-the-shelf design from, say, Lowther? <laughs> yeah, uh, normally I don't really like uh, to use the word or the name Lowther, but <laughs> I must be honest, uh, 40 years ago, when I was young, uh, the easiest way to make a speaker without having any knowledge about crossovers was buying a Lowther driver, build one of those backloaded horns they offer, they offer it, and you have a kind of a high-end speaker. Mm. And this is how I started. And uh, some years later I studied uh, engineering and I was a little bit fed up with the sound of the Lothers because of the screaming in the midst, even though I respect the brand. I don't want to make it bad now, but I, people who, lie, who know Lothar, they, they know um, where the problems are. And I think they are based that the, the, the maker of Lothar's Donald Shave is dead and mm. nobody continues the, the good work that this guy made. Right. And uh, so um, I simply modified the geometry of these cones and make my own strategy how to make them sound. And I found out how to get rid of the negative things I, I personally disliked and found more positive things. That means our, our drivers can make more bass, more highs, they don't have a shout in the midst. But anyway, I want to repeat it. I, I don't want to say bad things about Lothar's because Lothar helped me to come in this business and I respect what these guys mm. have done. So what may be interesting is this area. This is the, the, the creative area of Voxative. What we're actually doing here, we make a Actually, we make a new driver, mm. and uh, with the AutoCut system, we are constructing uh, the new speaker basket mm -hmm. that is actually ah, okay. actually here. This is going to be CNC milled, and it will be one of the parts for next year's high-end show in Munich. And it's no secret we we want to make it big <laughs> next year. Okay. Uh, the first design of this possibly this speaker. It's not fixed now, but you see the ideas that mm -hmm. we are uh, that we are dealing with mm -hmm. and to make this speaker. It's going to be bigger and of course we are not focused on pure full range speakers anymore. We make next year it will be a three-way speaker okay. and this is the design that we're. So here you find lots of storage things st standing around mm -hmm. Of course, uh, and here we have a place where we do all the metal work because um, even though we do not do the production of things, of, of uh, magnets and the metal pieces for the magnets here, mm. um, we have some machinery yeah. to yeah to modify everything that we want. Mm -hmm. That means a milling station, two lathes and uh, uh, lots of stuff so that we can uh, produce things that we need. So anything metal is done in here, right? Exactly. So when you look here, these are parts after the prototyping is made and the prototypes are made by us and then we give it away to other companies to produce it. So this is a piece of a magnet and uh, it needs to be uh, nickel coated because it's still raw, it's a raw material. Mm -hmm. It's a very special steel it's a, it's a silicone steel that is nearly impossible to machine and we have a wonderful partner in Germany who makes these steel parts. So, and all magnets are made by us. That means prototyping and production is outside, but the glue together with magnet rings and everything is also made here. So, when you see, this is a smaller magnet with smaller neodymium pills and, uh, of course, it is... Uh, we glue it together here on this place. Mm -hmm. So the bigger neodymium magnets you see here, these are neodymium rings. This is a small one, mm -hmm. you see? 
<laughs> this is really strong. You can move the complete shelf with it. Yeah. And we have bigger ones. And we have one that is like this. And uh, here we have, I, I would say, hmm, the most important part. This is our carpentry. And this is the most expensive machine that we have. It is a, a saw from Switzerland that can uh, cut wood with a tenth of a millimeter, with a precision of a wow. tenth of a millimeter. We are, we, this company is, in, is in, in a residential area. Mm. That means all the spraying and painting you cannot do here. Oh, okay. uh, so we make prototyping here. You see, this is a housing that comes from uh, a piano factory. Mm -hmm. It is ready, it is wonderfully painted, and uh, now our uh, carpenter assembles a driver and uh, checks if everything is 100% good, mm -hmm. and then it will be assembled, and later you see over there in the listening room, we will give it also durability. I listen to every pair of speakers personally because it leaves, uh, before it leaves. Yeah. So my first experience with field core drivers was that a guy from England, I think, sent me one of those museum units from 1910. It was produced by Voigt, which is the predecessor of Lothis. And it was broken. The cone was broken and the coil was broken. But when I saw it, it was such a wonderful museum piece, I thought, hmm, you must rebuild this with a modern technology. And this was the father of the Voxity Filco drivers. And uh, yeah, I'm very happy that I made them because uh, we have lots of people from all over the world who, who only order the drivers because you only need a big piece of wood you buy in the, in the Home Depot, mm -hmm. cut a hole, put the field core driver in, and you have a high-end speaker. And so, from this perspective, it's not so expensive, mm -hmm. because the, the, the resolution and the sound is on the highest level you can get. And this is the reason why we, we are kind of famous for our field core drivers, because uh, these, guys, these things are working, they never break, they, have, they are really high-end, and you can build up your open baffle, of course, we deliver a schedule for an open baffle with it mm. and you simply go into the Home Depot and buy wood for 100 bucks. So do most people come to you because of your reputation as being producers of excellent field core drivers? Is that why they come to you or is, is something else? It, it, it is a mix because the people who know who, who don't know us for so long, they come because Voxative is, yeah, we, we, are, we are winning a lot of prizes mm. internationally and I'm mm. very proud that this is happening. And it tells me that the work I did for all the years was uh, not for nothing. Right. And I see that we, we, we have a company with uh, 12 uh, employees and uh, we can pay our bills. And so it is a good thing to do. Uh, there are lots of worse jobs in the world. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> and sure. so I'm happy that this is working. Yeah. Because I, I, I started completely alone with uh, maybe 100 bucks in my pocket and now it's it's a company that is working all over the world and I'm yeah. proud that it that it happened and it looks a, kind of different we uh, I'm focused on all these piano surfaces piano paint surfaces and of course we started with full range even though we are getting to more two or three way speakers now yeah. and the other thing is we make our the drivers by ourselves and so we can, the speaker that we make, we're not buying speakers in China or somewhere and build a housing around it. We can do everything by ourselves. And this gives us the possibility to make a sound that we like. And it seems that people on, on, out, out of Berlin also like it. Cool. And, and I love music, of course. Yeah. And uh, this is the reason why I, I had the, those, uh, this maybe kind of funny dream to have the best speaker in the world. And kind of, after 40 years, I'm kind of successful. <laughs>